Style tuning has been out for a handful of weeks now, and the depth of it is truly surprising. Here are seven things I bet you didn't know about Midjourney's newest feature. When you create a tuning test, Midjourney can create 32 all the way up to 256 different styles to choose from. That's a lot of images that you do not have access to. You can't actually save and download these images that get created for the test. But that's not entirely true. Instead of picking between pairs, if you click on pick your favorites from a grid, you can actually right click on one of the images that you like, click open image in new tab, then you'll see this little set of numbers and letters inside of the link. That is actually the job ID. So if we copy this and we go back into discord, you can hit forward slash show. Now we're going to paste that set of numbers and letters, hit enter, and there you go. You actually get the grid that was created by the test. That's amazing. Now you have access to up to 256 images every time you make a style tuner. And if you look at the prompt, it comes with a seed number. I just have to point out that that is not the seed number for this set of images. And I can prove that by doing this. If you copy the entire prompt, including the seed number and regenerate it, you'd think you would create this exact set of images, but that's not gonna happen. You'll end up with something like these instead. So just keep that in mind. The prompt that created these images is not the prompt you see here. Furthermore, you might be thinking, oh, well, I could react to this image with the envelope emoji, and then that will send me a new scene number. But look, that does not work either. There is no way to faithfully recreate the images you get in the style tuner, but as I showed you, there is a way to download those images, so I feel like that's kind of half the battle. You're not going to lose them forever. This next tip is about how you can write the style codes. In fact, you can combine more than one style code by linking them together with a hyphen. Like that. That's how you would write it out. Or it would look something like this if you use some real codes. And what that is going to create is one third of each of those styles. This is an amazing way to create some unique unique art. I mean, look at number three, that's that's so cool. But if you want to get even more unique and random, here's what you can do. Simply type in your prompt and then dash dash style space random and mid journey will generate a completely random code for you. <laughs> These are so cool. I love number one a lot, but buckle your seatbelts because there are a few more things we can do with this idea. First of all, we can link a bunch of random styles together using that trick with the hyphen. Batman style random, 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 random. Oh my god, these are terrifying. Okay, ignore Ignore those. And whatever you do, do not copy those codes that I use. Before we move on, there are two more tricks you can do with this idea. The first is deciding what length of test your random code is chosen from. You can type in random-16 to get a random code that was tuned from a test with 16 different options. But you can also use random-32, random-64, and random-128. Again, this just opens the options to even more unique art, making sure your random styles are unlike anything else anyone would ever come up with. These are kind of strange, but I don't mind number four. I kind of like where that's going. My actual favorite thing to do with style random is to explore it with the repeat option. First, I'm pretty sure you're going to need to have fast mode enabled, and then you're going to type your prompt style random, and then finish it off with repeat and then a number. The limit of your repeated prompts is 40, so just keep that in mind. I think five is a great place to start. They might not all be your favorites. These are kind of cool different for sure much more moody here oof spooky and then oh i like these a lot number one is amazing moving on to tip number three this one also has to do with style random but it's pretty specific so i think it deserves its own place on the list after you input the word random in your prompt you can then select the length of the quiz and the percentage of selections made and what's really interesting is that it doesn't have to be one of the standard default quiz lengths so you could put random dash 100 for the amount of questions in the tuning quiz and then dash dash 50 to say that you want 50% of that quiz to be chosen, which means that that style code was based off of 50 different choices, 50 different directions you could have gone. Before we continue the list, I have something that I need to address. I appreciate every single one of you and I need your help. Over the past year, I've tried my best to keep my videos sponsor free and I need your help to continue this. I get a lot of emails asking to advertise in my videos and I don't ever want to interrupt the lesson to tell you about a VPN or how you can learn 
learn more on Skillshare. So I've created a Patreon. And if you want to help me keep my channel free of sponsors, this is where you can support. I'll never paywall any existing content, but there are a lot of videos I'd like to make that simply wouldn't perform well on YouTube. So in exchange for your support, you'll receive first impressions of new AIs releasing and tech updates, packs of 4K wallpapers each month, multiple prompts per week, access to monthly Q&As, as well as a big discount off of my entire catalog. I wouldn't be here without all of you, and if you want to help shape the future of this channel, I hope you consider this offer. Thanks. Back to things you didn't know about style tuning. Now, if there is a code that someone shared with you, but they didn't want to give you the tuning test that created it, here's what you can do. Type this into your address bar, tuner.midjourney.com slash code slash, and then type in the code. It'll look something like that. You hit enter and boom, it takes you to the test that created it. That's pretty powerful, right? This is a perfect way to recover a test if you've ever lost the link yourself. However, if you try this with a random code that you generated, it's not going to work. So that's a bit of a bummer, but there is something else you can do. Go to this style decoder website made by a member of the community. Thank you again to Ktemi, this is amazing. You're going to paste the random style code here, hit decode for mid-journey, and boom, you get the exact instructions of how this code was made. Sure, it's not going to take you to a tuner, but if you had a tuner quiz and you inputted these exact instructions, you would come up with the exact same style. So a random code is never truly random, if you know what I mean. Now on to tip number five. Let's say after all of this, after all of the random styles you search through, there is one you absolutely love and you want to try it again without having to write it out each time. Here's what you can do. You might think about saving it as a shortcut, but that's not what I'm going to be talking about here. For this tip, I want you to go into your settings by hitting forward slash settings under the prompt box and then look for this button right here, sticky style. This is going to make your last use style appear in every one of your prompts. First, you'll need to generate with that style code again. Now, any future prompt you create with sticky style enabled will use that style code. And that's going to save you a lot of time, especially if you know you're going to be using one specific style moving forward. I have two more tips for you, and this next one has to do with creating the tuning quiz itself. Let's say in general that you knew what you wanted, like an old van with graffiti on it from the 1960s. You'd end up with some pictures like these, but you knew that you didn't want a specific color. Normally, you would try something like this, graffiti on an old van 1960s dash dash no red. And that would be negative prompting something out of the picture. But when you try to tune a prompt like that, it's not going to work. The no parameter is not recognized inside of tuning. But we can get around that by using multi prompts. So we'll do graffiti on an old van 1960s colon colon. And then we're going to mention the color that we don't want red another two colons. And then we're going to input a negative value. By default, the no parameter is negative 0.5, but here you could bump it up even more to minus one. You cannot go any higher than that unless you adjust the weight of the first part of the prompt because the prompt as a whole needs to be a positive value. So if you wanted graffiti on an old van without the color red, that's how you would do it. And the last tip, but probably not least if you ever run into this problem yourself, if you try to tune a prompt and the link to the quiz does not appear in the chat, you'll want to go into your user set Settings, scroll down into app settings, then text and images, and right here, embeds and link previews. Show embeds and preview website links pasted into the chat. You want to make sure this is enabled, turned on. If your quiz isn't showing up when you tune for it, that's where you have to go. There are seven tips for you, and if you want to see an even cooler mid-journey tool created by the community, you can check out this video right here. I hope you're doing well, take care, and I'll see you next time. Peace.